So in section 11.7, there's two different types of equations that you're gonna solve. The first one is exponential equations. An example of an exponential equation would be something like this. Three to the X plus one equals 81. And another one would be E to the 2.3 X equals 8.6. Now there's a couple ways you could solve these things, but generally speaking, for these, I'd recommend just one way, which is take the log of both sides using the base of the term that has your variable and the exponent. So in this case, I wanna take log base E on both sides, E to the 2.3X equals log base E of 8.6. Now, you're not gonna see many books write log base E. What are we gonna write instead of that? Does anyone know? LN. 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 Perfect, LN. But the reason I write log base E is so that maybe you'll see the nice simplification on the left-hand side a little bit easier. How does the left-hand side simplify? Cancels out. What am I left with? 2.3X. 2.3X, excellent. So X equals LN of 8.6 divided by 2.3. And you can get a decimal value as needed. That's fine. Now what worked out really nice here in this particular one was that we chose a log base E and we got this nice cancellation. You can do that with other problems like this. In this case, what log should I choose on both sides? I don't know if I'm gonna do this with logs. Well, the variable is gonna be, you could do log base 10. In fact, uh, maybe I should do it with log base 10, just for giggles, and then we'll look back and see it a different way. So if I did log base 10 on both sides, three to the X plus one equals log base 10 of 81. Well, I don't really need to put the base 10 because that's understood there. So I'm just gonna ignore that part. I'll write it without it. The X plus one comes out in front, X plus one, log of three equals log of 81. <clears throat> now, instead of distributing this, I'm gonna divide both sides by log of three. Professor Penn? Yeah. Why did you use log base 10 instead of uh, log base three? Uh, I'm gonna go back and do it with log base three. I think log okay. base three is gonna have a little bit more efficiency. So we're actually gonna do this one two, maybe three times. And this is the first pass. It's not the most efficient. So you're right, Craig, Caitlin. Let's divide both sides by log of three. So I'll divide both sides by log of three. And on the left-hand side, I'm just left with X plus one. On the right-hand side, I have log of 81 divided by log of three. Now there's something interesting happens that if you do log of 81 divided by log of three, you get actually a nice number. So let's see if we can't see that for ourselves. I'll do log of 81. And then you gotta hit the closing parenthesis divided by log of three. And oh, wow, like I said, you get a nice number, you get four. So, okay, let's put that in. This is really X plus one equals four. So X equals three. Great. But let's go back to Kaylin's suggestion and take a look at it with log base three. Are we okay with this one here first? Like I said, we're going to look at it again, except this time with log base three. Mm -hmm. So let me start over here with x is, or three to the x plus one equals 81. This time we'll do log base three on both sides. But what do you get? Well, 
the left hand side is the place we're going to get the, the nicest simplification. How does the left hand side simplify? When the log of the threes cancel. Yep, log of the threes cancel and you're just left with the exponent. So x plus one equals log base three of 81. Now, a lot of you might not be able to do log base three of 81 in your head and that's okay. There's a couple ways you can do this. One of them on the TI-84 is kind of built in. If you hit the math key, I find it easiest to scroll up to get to option A. And there you go, log base three of 81. Now, before I press the enter key, let's think about it. What power of three gives you 81? Well, three squared is nine. Three to the third is 27. How about three to the fourth power? Oh yeah, there you go. So the right-hand side on this actually does simplify very nicely. And we get x plus one equals four. So x equals three, just like the last one. Nice. Let's do this one more time. Now, this last little piece can be kind of tantalizing and it does actually lead to a different way to solve these types of problems. I don't recommend necessarily looking for it all the time because it's not typical that you're gonna be able to solve log problems this way. If you had 3dx plus one equals 81, so doing this for the last time, if you notice right away that that's three to the fourth power, then you can kind of get rid of the exponents. You can say, oh, okay, that's really, oops, should be x plus one equals four for x equals three. Wow, that's kind of nice. Now, what happens in between? You don't necessarily have to be an expert on it, but if this was a face-to-face -face class, I'd probably give you extra credit for showing this step. Really, you're gonna take the log base three on both sides. And then those two operations cancel, you're left with x plus one equals four and x equals three you get again. So you're free to choose whichever one of those you like best. This works out nice when it happens, but it doesn't work out that way often. So I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I used to teach it religiously, but it, it just feels like it's more contrived than anything else. Mostly you're gonna be st stuck with stuff like this where it doesn't work out nice and even. <clears throat> Comments on this? Any preference um, as to how to solve this? Uh, we can call this A, um, B or C. Which, which approach did you like best? A, B, or C? B. B? Okay. I, I like B, but, you know, whatever works for you. <clears throat> Oops. Don't want to cancel the meeting. Um, could you go up to A one more time real quick for a sec? Sure. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Let's do one more exponential equation and then we'll uh, work on some logarithmic equations. Hey, Professor Parent. Yeah. If, if there was an X squared there and mm -hmm. you were trying to get the, you know, square of the X out, would you square root the whole thing or so, just the one that's side? A good question. Suppose I had three to the x squared plus uh, one equals, I don't know, uh, eight, okay? Then what I'd have to do is I'd have to take the log on both sides. Mm -hmm. It'll be a log. I'd probably choose log base three like this, log base three of eight, and that should be a square there still. These operations cancel each other out so I get x squared plus one equals log base three of eight. 
And now I still got to solve for X. And for me, I'd move the one to the other side, minus one. And Kaylin, mm -hmm. what can we do to solve for X here? Well, you would square root it. Yeah, square root that whole thing, log base three of eight. And I'm putting in parentheses minus one here because I don't want people subtracting this and getting, oh, log base three of seven. You can't do that. There is what one other thing you need here. Go ahead. Did you? What did if you, it were instead of a plus one, what if it was a plus two X? Uh, that would be a lot more difficult. You probably have to use a quadratic formula at that point. Uh, the one last thing that I say that you need here is the plus or minus. So you need that okay, plus or minus because so there's two need, solutions. Yep. You would need to use the quadratic formula. If if you had instead of an x here, if you had or instead of a one here, if you had an x or a two x or something like that, you'd probably have to use the quadratic formula. Or a minus three x. Yep. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. So yeah, if if here you had say x squared plus 2x equals log base three of eight. I mean, you could complete the square on that one. Maybe make it a 3x, that way it's less palatable to complete the square. But if you move this to the other side, x squared plus 3x minus log base three of eight equals zero, you could use a quadratic formula. A would be one, B would be three, and C would be minus log base three of eight. So just run through. It'd be ugly, but you get a solution. Okay. All right. Good questions, Kaylin. Thank you. Let's finish up exponential equations here with this one. Two to the X plus one equals five to the X. Now this is going to be one of the more challenging exponential type problems that you'd have because you got a variable on both sides. And the bases here are different. So that's even more of a pain. So the question is, well, how do I solve here? Good question. Well, you can take logs on both sides. In fact, you need to take logs on both sides. And it's up to you what base you wanna choose. Now you could choose base two or base five or base 10 or base E, whatever you want. But choosing like base two or choosing base five is only gonna help you out on one side of the equation. So it's up to you. I'm not sure it really matters. Let's just for variety in our problems, let's just do log base 10. So I'm not gonna do any fancy logs. Well, I should do this kind of a little bit more brute force. I don't have to write base 10 here because when you write log, it's understood. Now, the big thing that happens here is these exponents can come out in front. So it's going to look like this. x plus 1 log of 2 equals x log of 5. Nothing really startling yet. Just took log on both sides. The first trick that you need, though, is we need to distribute that log to both of these terms. So it's gonna be x log of two plus one times log of two, or basically just plus log of two, like that. Keep in mind that you wanna get the x's on one side. I've got an x term over here, and I got an x term over here. The easiest thing to do is to move that term to the right-hand side. Now, if I move this term to the right-hand side, I get log of two equals x log of five minus x log of two. So here was kind of like our first trick and coming up next is our, our second trick in this one. Second trick is that I need to get the X's by themselves. So how can I do that here? Well, the second trick is to factor out the X. 
the next here, I just factored it out. If you distribute this, and some may, might want to put the x here, that's fine. If you distribute this, you get x log of 5 minus x log of 2. So these two things are equivalent. But the reason I distributed or factored this is because I need to get the x by itself. There's one last step here to do to get x by itself. Does anyone see what that would be? We can expand. Say again. No, I was thinking no. That's okay. Um, Would you divide uh, both sides by log of five and minus log of two? Perfect. Just think back to if you had three x equals twenty one. Something's multiplying the x to get rid of that. You divide. Same thing here. It's just that you've got kind of an ugly term there, as far as the division is concerned, but it'll still work. So you can finish this one up by dividing log of two by log of five minus log of two. And that's your X. Now, if you're looking at that and going, gosh, what a mess. You know, I don't know how I calculate a decimal value for that. You just do have to take a little care. It'd be log of two divided by this. One thing that I would suggest, especially if you're, not too sure of yourself with the calculator, is that you can use the quotient rule in the denominator. That'd be log of what over what in the denominator. Does anyone remember their quotient rule? Five over two. Five over two, awesome. So five over two, that's just 2.5. That might make it a little bit easier to calculate this. Let's do this one in Desmos. Let me go to functions and do log of two divided by log of 2.5. And it's not liking that. Why is it not liking that? There you go. So 0.756. So it's a friendlier way to calculate that. You can actually use that to check your answer. You can do, say, two raised to this power. And I'll copy that here. Plus one. And I'll compare that to uh, actually, the plus one should have been up there in the exponent. My bad. Let's see. Let's put a one up there. And let's compare that to five raised to that same power. Five shift that power. And I get the same thing. So that's pretty convincing that we got it right. You can do likewise on your graphing calculator. But that's it for exponential functions. Any comments or thoughts on that last one there? Let's move to logarithmic functions. So logarithmic functions, there's gonna be two different methods you need to solve your logarithmic functions with. And it's gonna depend on the form logarithmic she logarithmic equations is what we're solving but for method one and this is not by any means a name that you need to know method one i just call it that the idea is if you have log of a equals log of b in other words, you have logs on both sides and technically I probably should put in a base here. The base is the same. If these are the same, then A equals B. 
Now you're not canceling logs on both sides, but it looks that way. So examples of something for which we would use this would include log of x squared plus 2x equals log of x squared plus 8. So that'd be a problem like that, or that we could solve using this. And also log of x minus 7 minus log of x minus 3. <clears throat> equals log of 3 over x. That's another one that is not in this form yet, but can be put into that form so that you can solve it that way. Now, method two is going to look a little different. The idea behind method two is that if log base a of x equals y, if you have something like this, then you can rewrite it using exponents. So remember how to do that with exponents. What would this be? What to what power equals what? A to the y equals x. Excellent. Now, how do you tell which one you're going to use on this one? And I think, I think it was Gidget there. Thank you. How do you tell which one you're going to use? Well, in this one, everything is part of a log term. In this one, you have stuff that's part of a log and stuff that's not in part of a log. So if you have stuff that's not as part of a logarithm term, then you're going to use this second idea. So, um, Professor Parent? Yes. How did you, sorry to go back, but um, how did you get the log x minus 7 and the log x minus 3? Oh, this is just a different example problem. So this is one problem. That's another problem. Oh, geez. Okay. I, okay. <laughs> so yeah, we're actually going to go through and solve these in a little bit here. Um, but I was just giving you examples of stuff that you would solve using the first method. And this is stuff that you would solve in the second method. Log base four of two X minus one equals four. And then log base two of x minus three plus log base two of x equals two. So just examples of different problems. And to satisfy your curiosity here, Caitlin, let's solve these problems first. So we'll be using method one. So I'll call this example one here. We've got log of x squared plus 2x equals log of x squared plus 8. Well, according to this little idea that I put up here at the start, I can get rid of the logs. Now, it's not written, but it's understood that this is base 10, but it's base 10 on both sides. And because I have the log of something equals the log of something else, those somethings, if you want a fancy word for something here, it's the argument. The arguments of these log functions are equal. So it's x squared plus 2x equals x squared plus 8. And I think you're going to like the way that this one works out. I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. What equation do I get when I do that? No one? 2x equals 8. Awesome. Thank you. 2x equals 8, so x equals 4. Yay. Now, technically, you got to check your solutions and make sure that you don't get a negative number as the argument. And we don't. If you put in a 4 here, I get 4 squared is 16 plus 8, 24. Over here, 4 squared is 16 plus 8, 24. I get the log of 24 on both sides. It checks. Yay. So you're done. <clears throat> now, the one thing you got to look out, look out for is if you put this back in and you get a negative number, that's a problem. But we didn't.
any comments or thoughts on that first one before I move on to the next one? Are we okay with that one? Would you tell me if you're not? No, you wouldn't tell me? Okay, just checking. Tell you. <laughs> All right, thanks, Samantha. Okay. Log of X minus seven minus log of X minus three equals log of three over X. Now the temptation for a lot of people is to just cancel the logs right away. You can't do that. Method one works when you have the log of something it was a log of something else. Not when you have three logs or more, you gotta have the log of something versus the log of something else. So the idea for us here is that you've got to write the left-hand side using just one logarithmic term. Does that sound familiar? We're gonna have to use our rules of logarithms to bring that together as the log of something. Can anyone tell me what that something would be? X minus seven over X minus three. Perfect, X minus seven over X minus three. That's what we needed. So we had a log on one side and a log on the other side. The arguments are equal. In other words, X minus seven over X minus three equals three over X. Wow, okay. This is a proportion. And if you remember, we can solve a proportion by cross multiplying. So that'd be X times X minus seven equals three times X minus three. All right, so this is the problem that never ends. This is a quadratic equation now. And I wanna get everything on one side. So I'll subtract three X and add nine. That gives me x squared minus 10x plus 9 equals 0. That mm -hmm. factors. And I get two possible solutions. And I was careful to say possible solutions. You have to check these. Let's start with the first one. Now, where do I check it? Do I check it up here? Back in the original equation? Back in the original equation. If I put in a one right here for X, what happens? What do I get? Log of, yeah, I get the log of negative six. <clears throat> that doesn't work. So if I check X equal one, the log of negative six, I don't need to go farther. You can't do that. Can't take the log of a negative number, it's not defined. So that doesn't check as a solution. How about log of nine? Or excuse me, not log of nine, but x equal nine. That would give me log of two, right? Nine minus seven would be log of two minus log of six equals log of three over nine. Now I've said this in my videos, the minimum you need to check for is that you don't have any negative numbers. And that's true, you don't have any negative numbers here. You can actually go a little bit further if you did log of two over six equals log of three over nine, how do I know that that's true? Does anyone spot that? What's one over six in lowest terms? One over three. One over three. And three over nine is also one over three. So these two equal. now. If you're confident, you could just quit here. You say, you know what? I'm pretty sure I did this one right. You can quit here because you didn't have any negative terms in a log. But it's nice to see that it actually does check. 
So it actually does work out perfectly. Okay. Thoughts on this one? Don't worry, I, I usually don't put any more than 12 or 14 of these on an exam. All right. I wouldn't be there for a while if you put 12 or 14 of those. Yeah. I, I, I'm very much kidding. Um, that's certainly one of the harder problems that you would see on an exam on this. Uh, but, and I do have to cover some of the harder ones. Uh, there'd probably be at most like one, one or two like that, probably one. Let's look at method two. I try and be fair on my exams, I really do. So method two, reminding ourselves that was log base A of X equals Y. If you get that, then you can rewrite it as A to the Y power equals X. So I'll start with log of 5x equals 2. And I guess there's a little bit of a problem in this in as much as I don't have a base here, right? I mean, here I had a base, here I don't have a base. So what's my workaround for that problem? Wouldn't you assume that it was log base 10? Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Yeah, it's log base 10. And from there, you can rewrite it. It's always the same little idea. You start with the base. The base to this power equals this. So it would be 10 squared equals 5x. What does x equal? Anyone help me out there? 20. 20. Now, like your last problems, you do have to check it. But if I put in a 20 here, five times 20 is 100. It's not giving me a negative value. But you can go further and realize that the log of 100 is two. So it checks. <clears throat> Let's try a, a similar one to that one. Do you see why we did it this way as opposed to method one? This term here didn't have a log. I can't just cancel out log on one side. So that made this a method two problem, whereas some of the other ones with logs on every term were a method one problem. Log base four of two X minus one equals, I've got four here, but I don't want to do that one. Um, let's do five. Okay. Uh, well, I've got log on one side, but not on the other side. So I'm pretty much pushed into using method two here. Method two would say that I got to rewrite this using exponents. Somebody I haven't heard from today. Tell me what this would look like using exponents. What to what power equals what? Four base power five. Good. Four to the fifth power equals two x minus one. Now you take out your calculators and double check me. Four to the fifth power is a thousand and twenty-four. And thanks, Jessica. Um, if I add one to both sides, I get 1,025 equals 2x, or 1,025 divided by 2 equals x. Like the last one, you can double check your work. Make sure that this doesn't give you a negative number here. So that's like 512.5 times two minus one is definitely gonna be a positive number. And if you actually check it out all the way, it does work. So. Are you feeling okay with method two here? There is one last one I wanna do with method two, 
But I want to four to the fifth equals two x minus one, not Correct. just x. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So it's this the base to this power equals the entire argument here. So that was the two x minus one. Okay. Last one here. Uh, mm -hmm. Log base two of x minus three plus log base two of x equals two. This almost looks like method one, right? But it's not. How come it's not a method one problem? Because of the two, two logs. logs. Yeah, this two is not part of a logarithmic term. And if it's not part of a logarithmic term, you're not gonna be able to write it in such a way that you get log of A equals log of B. So that pushes us towards method one, or excuse me, method two, I should say. Now in method two, I'm gonna have the log on one side equals something on another side. Well, I've got my something, but I've got to write this as one logarithmic term. So how do I bring these together as one logarithmic term? X minus three times X. Perfect. So what's gonna happen here is you can use the product rule to bring these together. Log of the sum, is, the sum of the logs is the log of the product. So it's gonna be X minus three times X. So just bringing those two together as one logarithmic term. Let me distribute that first before we try and rework this a little bit more. X squared minus three X equals two. Now I can do my magic here. Now I can rewrite that using exponents. What would it be? Try in your mind and in your paper to, to write it down first. Try and figure out what would that be using exponents. Just like we did up here. This to this power equals this. Full exponent rule. All right, I'll give people a couple more seconds. Figure that part out for yourself. Square. Go ahead, Jessica. Two squared mm -hmm. equals what? X squared minus three. Yep. So two squared equals X squared minus three X. Let's bring that up over here. Then it's solving. That's going to be four equals X squared minus three X. How am I going to solve this one? You can subtract four on both sides and then put it and then factor it. Excellent, excellent. Does anyone see how this one factors? X minus four and X plus one. X minus four and X plus one, excellent. That gives me two solutions, X equal four and X equal negative one. So, whew, all done. I hope not, not. Then you have to check. You got to check it. And I'll tell you what, I can spot one of these that doesn't work right away. Which one doesn't work? Negative one. Yeah. Negative one. Yeah, because when you try and put it in right away, you see you're taking the log of a negative number. You can't do that. So that one's gone. This one's okay. You get the log of one plus the log of four log of one in any base is going to be zero log base two of four what power of two gives me four the second power so that one actually checks perfectly all right well done well done thoughts or comments on these all righty well let me stop the video here and put you into some breakout rooms Give you a chance to work on these.
然后